Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm thrilled to finally be introducing two reptiles that I welcomed home back in April. I don't normally post welcome home videos with multiple reptiles in them. <laughs> That's my dog. But the exception to that is last year when I welcomed home three leopard geckos in a summer. And because I was working on enclosures at the time, I didn't introduce them all, you know, their own. So I introduced them in one video. I'll include that up here just in case you missed it. Today's video features two reptiles because I actually got them the same day from the same person. And, you know, I wouldn't have gotten one without the other. So I figured I'll tell their story complete and just introduce both of them in this video. So one of them is a Euromastix named Ren. And the other one is a Peter's Bandit skink named Shukaku. So before we get started, I ask that you please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and away we go. I first saw Ren for adoption through Crimson Exotics when I was scrolling on Instagram back in February. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, mm, yes please because it's not often that you'll find Euromastics for adoption or rehoming you know a lot of times they're through breeders or they're wild caught and I don't want to support that so I always kind of wanted a euro but like it wasn't an active search of mine I was like if the right reptile comes along like the right Euromastics the right situation if it comes along then I'll jump on it and this felt like the right one to me not only because she was from a situation of adoption but because i knew the people who were running crimson exotics and i knew they were really trustworthy and reliable so i want to give a really special thank you to crimson exotics for giving me the opportunity to have ren i applied to adopt ren i was approved and then we had to wait for shipping temperatures the only problem with that is that indiana shipping temperatures aren't really good until like almost summer like may or June, which is summer. So all of February, all of March, and all of April, I planned for her arrival. I got her an enclosure, I got her decor, I got all of her heat and her UVB equipment, I got her substrate. I made sure I was prepared for her. And of course, what's really great about adopting a reptile is that you get to work with the person who is fostering her. So for me, that was Michaela, and I'm going to leave all of her information down below. That way you guys can check her out because top-notch like above and beyond care and also above and beyond communication and so i just really appreciated being able to get a reptile from a situation where it wasn't a rescue it wasn't a rehome that turned into a rescue they'll actually have you know vet records for them they'll actually have you know quarantined them given them proper care and they'll be able to tell you about their likes and dislikes or behaviors that you can accommodate for with the enclosure that you're prepping it's just amazing it's it, it was a lovely process so in those three months of like preparing for her i was asked on instagram in an instagram stories question and answer little box that you can put in your stories by the way if you don't follow me on instagram please do i'll leave it down below but it's just just as animal friends just like it is on youtube i was answering questions and someone asked me like what reptile would you want next? It's a very common question. There's only so many reptiles that I have like on a list that I'm looking for. And a lot of times I'm looking for them for years before I'm able to find one from a situation of adoption, rescue, or rehoming. A Peter's banded skink on that list. And so Michaela was, you know, swiping through my stories. She saw that I had wanted one. She messaged me and she was like, I actually have a Peter's banded skink that I'm like rehabbing right now. Do you want it? And I was like, yes, 100%, I'm gonna make it happen. I was actually at the time building my fire belly toad, yellow belly toad polydarium, which I'll include up here, Ren's enclosure. And I was working on upgrades for like four other species, like my bitter dragons, a couple of other animals. Like I just was busy with enclosures. It was a glorious time. It was right after I had COVID. So like I was still learning how to breathe again. Like oh, it, was a, it was a mess. My face was a mess, my nose was a mess, but I was working on enclosures. It was a good time and I was actually like tearing down the old firebelly toad, yellow belly toad polydarium, which had a background in it. And I was like, let me just utilize this background that's in it already for an arid species being the Peter's bandit skink. So then I went ahead and prepped that enclosure. So I had an enclosure for the Peter's bandit skink. I had an enclosure for Wren. I was ready to go. So then I reached out to Michaela again as temperatures were starting to warm up. And I was like, we're still not quite in shipping temperature range, but I also want to tell you I'm going to be in Tennessee in April if you want to do a meetup or whatever and at first she said no but then she was like actually yeah like let's do that and so that was really happy for me because I didn't want to have to ship them I always get nervous when it comes to shipping reptiles not that there's anything wrong with it 99% of the time it goes completely fine but it, it is always something I'm nervous about but that's just me a nervous Nelly 
really. So I was really happy about that and I prepped some enclosures and some heating so that when I was at the cabin in Tennessee, they'd be able to have heating and temporary enclosures while they were chilling. Michaela made sure they were like really well prepped. Like she made sure to put sand in Shukaku's enclosure. She made sure to like pack an entire like container of all the lentils and seeds that Ren eats. Like just above and beyond care is what I'm telling you. Ren and Shikaku both had a vet visit before they came to me. I can't even tell you how reassuring it is to know that I brought home animals to my house that were like healthy because there's been so many times where I thought an animal I was bringing home was healthy and it wasn't and that actually has been like a really um, unfortunate trend for the last like I don't know 10 different species I've brought home like my white tree frogs my rats my garter snakes every single time in the past like year and a half I've brought an animal home it's had an issue and so it's really nice to have one that doesn't have an issue so let's talk a little bit about Ren and Shukaku's backstories. So Ren was being housed with two other Euromastics in a 75 gallon enclosure on bird seed. The enclosure was like not really well kept up. It was dirty and had like bits of food everywhere and poop. It was just not a good time. I also want to add that like bird seed is a completely inappropriate substrate for Euromastics, even though some people advertise that it's fine to keep them on that. It is an inappropriate substrate. But yeah, it was just an inappropriate Enclosure, it was too small, inappropriate setup, it was dirty, um, and also there was three Euromastics living together. Another thing to know about Ren is that she's a little bit on the smaller side for a Euromastics, and that's something that even the vet commented on when they saw her. She also had a little bit of like nose shed that was stuck that had to be uh, like shimmied out of place with a little bit of tender care. So yeah, otherwise she's doing fine and she did fine um, in Michaela's care. Now when it comes to Shikaku, who's the Peter's Bainted Skink. Shikaku was purchased from a pet store, which means, and first of all, all Peter's Bainted Skinks are wild caught with the exception of like a super, super small amount that have been bred in captivity that I've never even seen available to people for sale. So if you see a Peter's Bainted Skink, it's wild caught, like pretty much guaranteed it's wild caught. And so if that's something you're comfortable with, like you want to support, you know, wild caught importation, that's on you. It's not something I'm comfortable with. So I waited and waited and waited for a situation of rehoming and adoption. However, because Shukaku uh, is a Peter's Bandit skink and was purchased from a pet store, wild caught. So Shukaku was purchased, like I said, at a pet store and then was kept by an individual who I guess was bored of Shukaku because they weren't like active on the surface of the enclosure. It's kind of how it is. It's a skink that likes to live underneath the sand. So I guess the individual didn't do any research to know that that's just how it rolls with uh, Peter's beta skinks. And so they didn't want it anymore. So I'm pretty sure it was Michaela's brother or a relative or a friend of Michaela's who then was given the Peter's Bandit Skink to give to Michaela. Then Michaela had Shikaku for like a quarantine period. Like the amount of work that she went through to get him to eat and to like be properly acclimated is top notch because she literally had to do the lipstick method, which is my least favorite way of feeding insects. It's where you have to cut the insect uh, to like have its guts come out and then you put it on the mouth of the reptile and then they'll eat it then. And just nasty, nasty, I hate it. So she went through all that and got Shikaku eating so I don't have to. I was worried I might have to, but every single time that I've dug up Shikaku to feed, he just eats right away. Like doesn't need a lipstick method, barely needs the insect to move. It's just like, okay, tongs, insect, and just goes for it, which is amazing. So Ren and Shukaku have been with me since the end of April and it is now almost the end of June. My birthday is like in 10 days, so it's like mid-June right now. My birthday is June 26th for those who don't know. They've been with me for two months now, basically, and it's just been easy. It's been nice. Like, I haven't really had that many issues. Ren um, hates me but she's slowly warming to me. I anticipate it'll take a couple more months before she's like ambivalent about me at best. <laughs> and then as for Shukaku, um, pretty easy, does exactly what I expected, you know, stays in the sand. And then when it's time to eat, I just like, you know, find where he is and then, you know, bring him up. Here you go, here's some worms. And then he's up for a couple minutes and then shoo, right back into the sand. Pretty easy to care for, as long as you've done your proper research, of course, because you know, do your research. 
But yeah, exactly what I was expecting uh, a Peter Spada skink to be like after years and years of wanting one. Ren is a delight, even though she's absolutely grouchy and cannot stand me. The process of adopting Ren and also getting Shu along with Ren, which was just an absolute like treat, but the process of getting them was easy. Michaela, amazing to work with and also just like really great with communication, really great with reptile husbandry. And again, I will leave all of Michaela's links down below and also the links for Crimson Exotics. Everything's gone pretty swimmingly and I'm really happy about it. So that is an introduction to Ren and Shukaku, my reptiles that I've had for a couple months now that are settled in enough that I feel okay to share them on social media or well, especially on YouTube. I've shared them a little bit here and there on Instagram and on TikTok and on Twitter. The moment I adopted Ren and I knew I was getting Shukaku, I put them on Patreon. So if you are interested in seeing like new pet arrivals or like new enclosure builds or plans and things like that before I ever announce them on social media, Patreon is a place to do that. Also, I put my videos up there early for not just this channel, but my second channel, just in case you're interested. Let me know what type of content you'd like to see about Ren and Shikaku or about just their species in general. I will not be putting any care guides out for at least a year. I don't like to put care guides out in any form, even if it's like a really short care video. I don't want to put any care information out there because I'm inexperienced with this species and therefore I would like to build up that experience and then share that with you. It just feels like the more responsible thing to do. But don't worry, care guides will come. There's just, we gotta wait. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like. Also leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, check the links below, all the good stuff. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.